Hello and welcome to another SBC chat. Uh, today we have Don and Eleanor with us. If you could be so kind to um, give a little information of who you are, um, that would be great. I'm Eleanor, live with my husband Don. We've been married almost 51 years. Uh, I'm semi-retired in that I work as a, a freelance proofreader and I can either be very busy or not busy at all. And you also edit Insight for SBC. Oh you? yes. Uh, I'm Don and married to Eleanor, as indicated. Uh, I've retired from two jobs. I was a police officer for 30 years and I helped to lead the Christian Police Association for the following 20 years. And I'm uh, currently uh, honorary chaplain to the Police Rehabilitation Centre. Uh, haven't been able to get there since lockdown though, because uh, they haven't had any patients in. I'll, I'll ask this question. Uh, it's not on the list, I apologize. So um, Don, for um, those, those men that are still sig single, how did you manage to woo Eleanor? How, what is the story? How did you meet? Um, not to say that Eleanor didn't woo you back, but for the guys, how, could you just give us a well, little insight or a, just tell us the story? I'll tell you the story as quickly as I can. We met on a Christian house party in Norway. Uh, Eleanor was from Northern Ireland, I was from London, and uh, we got to know each other a little bit and uh, uh, I, this was in June uh, of 1967 and uh, I sort of continued the relationship by asking Eleanor for her address so I could send her a Christmas card. Oh, okay. However, by the time I got home, I was convinced that Eleanor was the one and uh, I asked a good friend, you know, how I might woo her and uh, he made the suggestion that I em employ Interflora and I send her uh, a mixed bunch of flowers every month. And on the first occasion, one red rose, the second occasion, two red roses, and keep uh, increasing the red roses. So whilst we were courting at a distance, Eleanor was getting the, uh, the flowers with the red roses and cryptic messages. <laughs> and it, uh, it had the desired effect. That's cool, that's cool. And, um... I don't know whether to ask Eleanor. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I can imagine explaining to your household why you were getting roses from a strange man. Um, <laughs> may have been, um, <laughs> how did that go? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was interesting. Um, <laughs> the first couple of times it happened. And then at the end of September, uh, on a Saturday evening, when I was recovering from a very bad bite of flu, one of the only times I've ever had that, the doorbell rang and Don was on the doorstep. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so as from there on we went. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. Wow. <laughs> That's really good. <laughs> well done, Don. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm still getting flowers. Are you? Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Um, how has your experience of lockdown been? Um... A bit weird. Uh, we, we've tried to maintain uh, uh, some sort of regimen. So things that we always did on a particular day, we, we've tried to keep doing those. Uh, so, you know, today's Sunday and you make sure you're prepared for Sunday in the same way as you always used to be prepared for Sunday, you know. Uh, bagels and marmalade is a Sunday ritual and so uh, um, you know we still have bagels and marmalade so yeah. we're, we're getting on with it. How have you seen God at work in this lockdown? What's What's been a, your, your experience of that? Where have you seen him? I think for, for me it's uh, having time to see God all around us. Yeah, that, that's been a good thing to do. Uh, the, some of the humdrum things have, uh, are not there anymore. So you've got time to think, to meditate, and uh, just to think a bit more about what God's doing. But uh, Eleanor, you uh, set up a, a very in innovative way of seeing God's blessings. 
Oh, at, at the beginning of um, lockdown, uh, our, my daughter, our daughter and I decided that we would make a point uh, every day of listing the blessings that were in that day. Uh, sometimes there were lots and lots and sometimes there, there were fewer in it. They could have been very humdrum or something very special. But we thought this was a way that we could actually, when freedom had been taken away from us, still see that God was there. So we, we, we made a list of these each, uh, each day and each weekend we compare notes. And uh, it's interesting to see sometimes some, some things are very similar, some things are very different, you know, different people, different circumstances, uh, but it's been a good time. And uh, it's made us appreciate what we often take for granted. Has there been a, um, a passage or a book of the Bible that has sort of kept you through this period of time or just one that's always coming back for, to you? That makes sense. Um, before lockdown started, I become aware in, in daily readings of two words that kept coming up and that was unfailing love. And it's, these seem to come up with increasing regularity. And uh, so I decided I would have a look and see how often th this phrase uh, was in, in the Bible. And this was New Living Translation, I think NIV called it steadfast love, but in the New Living one, and it was somewhere over 180 times. And looking at these and thinking, wow, all that time, God's unfailing love, right from the beginning, and through the Israelites and their disobedience and God's unfailing love. And it's something that has stuck with me uh, through lockdown that when a day when things aren't so good and you're a bit fed up with things I think actually God's love is still unfailing so that, that's been a blessing to me just to keep those two words in my mind uh, and for me uh, I've just gone back to my favorite passage which is Joshua 1 uh, at the beginning where God is giving instructions to Joshua and several times he tells Joshua to be strong and courageous uh, and I, I think, you know, that when Joshua was facing the unknown and um, difficulties, those were the words from the Lord to him, be strong and courageous. And, uh, you know, that keeps coming back to me. So would you be able to explain how you became a Christian and um, what impact that has on your life? Uh, I remember asking Jesus into my life when I was nine. Uh, we had uh, a mission in our church. In, in Northern Ireland, there were lots of missions went on in churches. And we had a mission for adults, for young people and for children. And I remember going home from uh, one of the children's meetings in the evening and getting down by uh, the bed and asking Jesus to come into my heart. Um, I, I coming, uh, making that decision at that time, there's got to be times later on when you reevaluate what's gone on. And when I was about 18, I'd gone on holiday with some friends to um, what was the Weck Bible House in Scotland. And was very much challenged at that time was, uh, was my faith real to me or was it an inherited one? And I had to uh, then start thinking about it, uh, you know, coming into adulthood, it would be. Um, I've been a Christian all those years. Sometimes it's been easy, sometimes it's been hard but I can't imagine life any other way. You know, from the beginning, Jesus has been there. He's been there when we've called on him. He's been there when we haven't called. And yet we look back and see obviously that his hand's been on, on various situations. And uh, yeah, I just can't imagine not, uh, not having him there. No. Uh, so similar for me, but uh, I was a little older when I came to faith. Uh, uh, I went to a camp for young people in uh, Lancashire and uh, uh, there, uh, under canvas, I, I learned about Jesus uh, being my saviour for the first time. And uh, down by my camp bed, under a bell tent, uh, under the stars, uh, I too gave my life to the Lord Jesus, to accepting him as my saviour. Um, for me, it's been, sort of, again, like Eleanor, up and, up and down. Uh, two weeks after I gave my life to Christ, my father died. So that wasn't an easy time to go through, but I, I felt an immense presence uh, of the Lord during that time. Um, similarly, throughout the rest of my career, going into the police in the first place, uh, convinced that that was what God wanted me to do. Uh, going on from there to, to studying at Bible College, uh, that was another thing. It was, it's so much part of, I felt, what the Lord wanted for my life. 
And so each stage, each uh, season, as it were, that he's led me through, I've convinced he's, he's been there uh, and led me on the way forward and prepared me for the next step. Yeah. So at SBC, we're a big family and we like to pray for each other. Is there any prayer requests that you have for yourself or those that you're close to that we can all pray about? Um, I think for me, I've been struck recently about how vulnerable our police officers are. Mm. Um, I know all um, first responders are, but I suppose being an ex-police wife, um, it, it makes you realise it's them. And they've been out during the whole COVID experience, uh, trying to keep things going. But added into it now, the protests, and that just takes them to a different level altogether. And as for their, um, their spouses, their families at home, who when um, whoever it is goes out on duty and they see a protest getting nasty, wondering is the one they love in that situation. Mm. And it's a tough one to watch and not, not know what's going on. So I, was, I would value prayer for them. Yeah. And I, I think for me, uh, I'd value prayer for our daughter, Alison, because uh, Alison lives on her own. And I think this is difficult for anyone who's actually living on their own. Uh, she's been furloughed, uh, so that wasn't easy. And then uh, now she's back at work, but still working from home. So still on her own. So uh, value prayers for her. Okay. Thank you, guys. I'm sure the church will pray into those. Um, record this time. I, do you know what? I just checked. <laughs> Honestly, I just checked and went, yes, we are recording. Good. <laughs>